Well, um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining us this afternoon. Um, we are, of course, talking uh, briefly about the life and the work of, of John Mafangeo. Um, I suppose the discussion is prompted by the fact that we have a remarkable collection of um, liner cuts and etchings, as well as the related cancelled liner blocks um, by the artist in our current online sale. Um, it's unique in many ways uh, for Strauss and Company. We, we've never done a, an entire online auction, uh, certainly of this size, dedicated to a single artist. Um, as I suppose from our perspective, it, it's been fantastic because it's allowed us to get, uh, um, I suppose, a, a, a broader idea of, of the artist's output, uh, to be able to see 150 works by a single artist all in the same room uh, is unique in any instance, uh, certainly uh, in an auction house. Um, so we've all really, really enjoyed it. Um, but we, we, of course, concede that, that John, although well known in South Africa, is very much a Namibian artist. And we wanted to try and get some uh, local Namibian insight uh, into John, how he's thought of, what his influences have been, uh, not only in his lifetime, uh, but after his death. Um, and we have a, a number of guests uh, with us today, and we're very grateful that they have joined us. Um, I think on the screen you can see Helen and Gina, uh, who are from uh, Start Art Gallery in Vintuk, a contemporary gallery that they founded in 2017, I think it is, and they're going to tell us a little bit more um, about what they are up to and, uh, and John's influences. Um, on their activities. And uh, we also have Aktofal Ilovu, and I think he might have just joined us. Aktofal, a, a, an artist as well as a curator at the Namibian Arts Association, and we're very grateful uh, for you to be joining us too. Um, we also have Annelien Ains and Elise, uh, Elise van Hastien, who I think will be joining us at some point, um, and we'll get some of their insight too. Um, it is very informal, so if you do have any questions, maybe you can add them in the chat and uh, we'll address them either during the talk or, 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 or afterwards. Um, we were going to start with Annelien, who actually knew John um, and get some insight into, into John as a man, but she's not here yet. But uh, maybe, Valhalla, maybe you can start a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up some slides. Um, Valhalla, for those of you who don't know, is our a senior art specialist chair in the Johannesburg office. Um, and I, I think, Vilalem, you're going to talk about uh, the obvious immediate South African link uh, between um, uh, with John, and, and that is, of course, his time at Rourke's Drift. So yeah, I'm going thanks. to just share my screen. Hold on. OK, there. Can you all see that? Yeah. So, so, so you rightly pointed out he is an Namibian artist, but I think in South Africa, he is best known for the fact that he studied at Rolks Drift in 1968-69. And you're looking at a contemporary photograph taken by Otto Lindbom in the early 1970s. Uh, Otto Lindbom, of course, the second generation of teachers at the center. Uh, on the photograph, uh, on the left, you see just a sliver of the Buffalo River. Uh, what is not in view is the drift, the little uh, clearing where the ferry would uh, uh, ferry people across the river from the one side to the other. And on the right hand side, the Shiyane uh, uh, mountain and uh, cradled in the foothills, of course, the Oscarberg mission uh, station. Uh, with uh, where, the, where the Evangelical Lutheran Arts and uh, Craft Center was actually, uh, was actually uh, housed. So a pretty beautiful scene. Uh, and it is small wonder that uh, one of the works that uh, John Mafangelio did there was a view, uh, a very uh, probably a, a print uh, with a very similar view. Uh, if you show the next slide, you will see what I mean. Um, <clears throat> This is uh, one of uh, the prints. It's called Zululand. And uh, in the center, cutting through the whole uh, picture plane there, you see the river with perhaps that uh, little island there where the actual drift was. Uh, and it's interesting uh, to see, you know, the name that he carved on the Zulu uh, land there. 
but what melts my heart is at the bottom right where it says where the art school is. And uh, it's, uh, of course, referring to these uh, two little buildings in the foreground. But uh, it just shows me, uh, apart from the wonderful bird's eye view that this gives, and I think he probably took up a position very much of what the photographer did in the previous slide, um, uh, the, that lovely and quite, I think, quite a sophisticated view. Uh, but he shows that art is part of the community, I think. Uh, when you look at uh, uh, the print, you will see daily activity, cattle herding, uh, uh, huts, uh, and also interesting, uh, the bull here and its horn, probably echoing the shape of the bull, which is, which, is, which is quite phenomenal, I think. Certainly one of uh, my favorite works uh, on, uh, on, on, on the whole, um, on the whole cell. Uh, when you look at another one of my favorite works, uh, it's this particular work. And here he talks about his tools, you know, a lovely title for this um, uh, woodcut, a carver who carves with three chisels. Uh, and it is very abstract, I think, you know, you can sort of recognize uh, the shapes of the chisels uh, in the left hand uh, corner there, but the rest is very abstract, you know, so, so it's, uh, it's self-referential, it's, it's looking at the tools of his trades and the magic that he can do uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with these tools. Now, um, he's, uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, he was uh, at, the, at, at the center, 1968-69, and his teacher was uh, nobody else but Azaria Mbata, uh, so uh, if you look at uh, the next slide, uh, then you will see I am, um, uh, I've included uh, the cover of Azaria's uh, autobiography. Um, uh, and I feel very ambivalent about this uh, autobiography because it, on the one hand, it's very poetical, it's very lit uh, lyrical, but on the other hand, very frustrating. There are no uh, uh, chapter indexes, there are no headings, there's no uh, index. So you literally have to read it from cover to cover to, uh, if you want to find something. I managed to find a reference to, and the only reference to John Mathandejo on page 108. And this is what uh, Azaria actually said. I was the only student who made prints, and this is the early, uh, in the early 1960s. Uh, the center started in uh, 1962. And what is more, I adapted them to tapestries produced by some of the young uh, African women at the hospital. Now, uh, the origins of the center really started in the long-term patients uh, at the local hospital who were uh, sort of co-opted into all sorts of various uh, arts and crafts. And he was uh, among them. He, together with Alina uh, Ndebele, who became quite a famous uh, weaver there. And the beauty of the center was that uh, the Swedish couple, the Hufeniuses, who started the center, uh, taught the students from the outset to become the instructors uh, quite soon. And Azaria was, uh, was, the, first, uh, was the first project. Uh, and so uh, he took to not only uh, printmaking, but also weaving. Uh, it was in this context that I main, uh, met John Mafangejo at the center while I was teaching there. We became David and Jonathan, rather than teacher and student. We shared a deep bond of friendship. Uh, and that's basically the, uh, the only reference. Azaria uh, left, uh, uh, he studied uh, in, uh, in Sweden in uh, 1964, came back to teach there, but in 1970, he left the country permanently to settle permanently in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Sweden. Um, now, um, him as a teacher, and the next slide will show you some of the teaching aids, nothing else but, um, uh, uh, but, but reproductions of a 19th century artist, uh, a war artist, if you like, Alphonse uh, uh, de Neuville, who captured the Battle of Rock's Drift. Uh, that was, of course, uh, one of the favorite uh, subject matters that the students uh, produced, apart from the obvious, you know, religious uh, themes that uh, they depicted, also the local history. And this was uh, for, uh, foremost uh, in their minds. And these reproductions would have been uh, 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 used as teaching aids. The students uh, discussed uh, the composition, uh, who is portrayed as the heroes and who the villains, uh, the use of color uh, and, uh, and the likes. And then the, the, the students would then go on 
to to um, uh, to make their own versions of uh, local history of the Battle of Rolf's Drift. The uh, Nubel uh, was uh, one uh, was one of the, the the official war artists during the Franco-Prussian War uh, as well, and I think that is why he was sent out to do that. There are a number of depictions of the scene, and I want to draw your attention to the crates in the foreground because, of course, John Mohangeju uh, made his own version, and the next slide would show that. Um, and it's interesting to see that he reversed the whole composition. You know, it's not uh, um, uh, the British uh, uh, soldiers who are the heroes like the first version, but here the active uh, ones are uh, the Zulu warriors. And it's almost as if the British are encased in one of those crates that you have there. I find it quite uh, a sophisticated rendering of uh, of that battle of uh, Rolf's Drift that he did in 1969. Now he did another version of the battle of Rolf's Drift in uh, 1981 uh, and it is in the book. Uh, Anna, uh, Anna Lien uh, will probably talk about it. Uh, I think she was instrumental in compiling the book. The book literally arrived today so uh, I just managed to skim through it. And then I was very pleased to discover another version of the Battle of Rockstrip that he did in 1981. Um, some of uh, his fellow students, of course, also depicted this. And the next slide would show you two other versions uh, of that. On the right hand side, uh, a dry point. It's an etching technique by Cyprian Chilaku. Uh, and again, look at the animation there, uh, the, the sense of movement. Um, that uh, that you uh, get there, and on the left, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, Shilaku, also a classmate of uh, John Mafangeju uh, at his time there, and uh, on the left, Pat McLaw. Uh, his, his his version was a little later, 1979, as you can see there. But again, uh, the rendering of figures, uh, and again the the dynamism, I think, of the whole battle, wonderfully captured there. Um, I want to end uh, my brief uh, 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 contribution here by looking at some of the Rolfstrift graduates there, uh, particularly John Mafangeju's classmates when he was there in 1968-69, uh, Dan Rakwate and Cyprian Salaku. Now, uh, interesting fact is that uh, John was hospitalized uh, at the end of uh, 1969 and he only came back a year later to finish his uh, course uh, in 1970. Uh, he was appointed an artist in residence in 1974, and then he would have met Vincent Paloy, Charles Nkosi, Eric Mabata, and uh, Vuman Corsi Zulu, uh, and other well known artists studying at the center. So, quite an illustrious uh, training um, center in South Africa would include Dumsani Mabasu, Santlin Getwa. Boni uh, Bongi in Glo uh, Glomo, Kaya Sun, Pat Mutla, uh, Lionel Davis, Tony Nkotsi, Tami Yali, and uh, Sandile Zulu. Okay. Well, thanks, Wema. And I think we, we, we all kind of agree uh, that, that, that the Rockstrift Center is, whilst well known, terribly underappreciated. Um, it's been an enormous force, uh, certainly in, in South African art, Southern African art. Um, not only a general force, but, but very specifically a modernist force. You, know, you, you speak about how sophisticated some of these viewpoints are. Um, maybe at first glance, many of these works uh, you know, might appear to be rather naive uh, or, or simple, but it couldn't be further uh, from the truth. Uh, so many of them, and then the ones you've selected, I think in particular, um, you know, have a you know, fantastic sort of dynamic modernist uh, force to them with a sort of warp viewpoints and perspectives. Um, and I, I don't think the center gets nearly enough credit uh, for the amazing work it's done over what three generations of, uh, of Southern African artists. Um, I see Elise uh, has managed to connect. So, so thank you so much, uh, Elise Van Haysen, for for joining us. Um, Elise, of course, a past curator at the Namibian uh, Arts Association and uh, the uh, Arts Association Heritage Trust. Um, Elise, if you don't mind, I might bring you in uh, almost immediately. Um, you, of course, have um, staged a number of uh, exhibitions, either directly focusing on John's work or uh, with some kind of tangential theme. Um, but perhaps you can speak to us about some of the uh, exhibitions you've staged uh, in, in the recent past, 
and also uh, the kind of ongoing legacy uh, John has, uh, certainly in the Namibian consciousness. Hi, Alistair. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. OK, thank good. You. <laughs> I'm glad that I can finally join. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, yes, I was the curator for the Namibian Arts Association and the Arts Association Heritage Trust. And during that time, um, especially with Anna Leon, in 2010, um, we did a commemorative exhibition on Mafangayo and his work from the works that we have in the collection of the Arts Association Heritage Trust. And from that, um, the book that you received today, the catalog, was also produced. Um, so those works are all the works that we have on John in our collection, or I wouldn't say our, in the collection. Yes. Um, that's also the biggest or the largest collection um, of Mafangayo works um, that I am aware of inside of Namibia. Um, yes, during that time, it was still just um, very much uh, considering his prints and his legacy. Um, at the later stage in 2013, we again um, had a, a, the legacy of Mafangayo exhibition, predominantly with Namibian printmakers working in the style of Mafangayo or in the liner cut relief prints or cardboard printmaking that was so intensively taught at the John Mafangayo Art School. Remember, um, under the initiation of Anna Leon and others, um, shortly after John's um, passing, they also created the John Mafangayo Art Center here in Bintuk. And, and that school, I think, is also underappreciated, like the Rogue's Drift Center you mentioned. Um, although this school, unfortunately, does not teach at the moment or offering any art courses anymore. At the time, um, from the 1990s through, I think, until 2010, it offered um, really a wide range of art um, courses. Uh, and that's also where we groomed our printmakers that we have today in Namibia. Um, so to move away from, from the printmaking as such, we, we then, um, with the help of Nashilongwe Shipwe um, Mushanja, um, around 2017, I think, or 2016, when he came back um, after studying, he then initiated um, the seasons of Mafangayo. And he saw Mafangayo as an activist and um, created the seasons of Mafangayo, uh, which I um, also <laughs> took part in and participated with the collection works. But um, his take was rather more radical, I would say, left wing, trying to really uh, see how Mafangayo's art um, inspired new artifacts and activist art and performance art, being a performance artist himself. Um, I found that very refreshing and new for our Namibian art landscape. Um, but unfortunately, uh, um, Mushanja then left to further in his studies. And um, I was left by myself because then also um, Helen and Gina left for studies as well. Um, and I thought I should just continue with this idea, but um, I'm from an older generation um, of curators. So I had my own take on the season of Mafangayo when I then invited in 2018, um, young um, emerging contemporary Namibian artists to um, have a look at the prints, at the work of Mafangayo and be inspired and re interpret those works. And I was quite surprised to see that I could then find uh, photographers, filmmakers, installation artists, and performance artists um, doing a show with me at the Franken Namibian Cultural Center. And that was for me really like, you know, taking Mafangayo um, into a new era. Of, of young um, emerging artists looking at his work from a metaphorical perspective. Um, yeah, a totally different way of seeing how his work can really transform our society. And, and I like that a lot. Um, that same year, um, there was also a um, theater performance, I Am John, um, at the 
national arts, um, national theater, which I believe, um, yeah, Sandy Rudd did, um, also on inspired by the works of Mafangayo. So I think <laughs> Mafangayo is still with us, and and we are we we try and we continue to be inspired by his work. So I think yeah, that's from my side that I can say for now. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Lise. I mean, would you? Uh, I mean, is is John a a household name in Windhoek and 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 in Namibia? I mean, is it are, are his images almost as recognizable or as immediately recognizable to 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 Namibians as say, pioneer landscapes might be um, in South Africa, or is he still uh, mainly known within the artist circles? Oh no, he's definitely not, according to me, well known. Um, no, it's definitely not the case, unfortunately. Uh, okay. It's mostly like we said, still amongst us, the artists in the small artist fraternity that we are, we we can recognize his works, but yeah, for so many people, it is not. And, and, and I know you've, in mean, what you've just said about um, the sort of collaboration with, with younger or contemporary artists, you know, it, was their reaction one of sort of reverence towards John's work? Um, I mean, did it interest them? Did they still feel it was uh, relevant and vibrant and, and, and contemporary? Um, or, or, or did they just see it as sort of an old master that needed to, needed to be assessed in some way? Oh, no, I, I didn't get that impression that I thought of him as an old master. Um, no, no, no. They, they really had reverence for him and so much respect. And they were actually very grateful for the opportunity um, to view his works, to be actually allowed into the storeroom to have a look at original prints by Mafangayo. Uh, I mean, uh, not everybody can afford an original print and not every, uh, it's not so accessible, you know, the, the collection at the moment as well. So I think, um, yeah, many people, I know I, I recently spoke to Herman Bamba, he lives in um, Norway, and, and he told me that he acquired an original Mofangayo and he was so proud of it and felt like um, a sense of belonging, having this master with him in his space. So I think, yes, the filmmakers, the, the photographers, yeah, the performance artists, I think they, they, they have that sense of um, reverence for this man and his yeah. work. Wow. Um, amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Elise. I think Annelien still hasn't managed to join us. Um, as I said earlier, she in fact knew John. Uh, it would have been interesting to, to hear her recollections of uh, of the artist, but um, Helen and Gina, uh, perhaps I could bring you in for a little bit. Um, Elise has obviously spoken about the influence on, on, on contemporary artists um, in, in Vintook specifically. Have you noticed uh, something similar? Are the artists that you work with, are they familiar with John's work and do they uh, sort of interact with it in some way? Yeah, I, I think, well, Helen can jump in um, as well, but I, I think, I mean, I would actually uh, almost disagree with Elise in a way about uh, him being known. You know, I think um, that to the extent that Pioneer is known in South Africa, I do think that um, that Mofangeo is known in in Namibia, like, like she just mentioned, a lot of people, yes, you know, in the arts predominantly, but I'd also say that a lot of people in the arts know Pioneer and not necessarily people, you know, yes, all yeah. over. Um, so in that way, you know, people do to, do know who he, he, he is, or at least know, you know, seeing his work, recognize it as um, something special to, to Namibia. Um, and that, that translates, uh, again, like Elise said, into uh, the contemporary arts and with a lot of the work that that people like Nashila and Wushik were, were doing and that Elise were doing, you know, um, kind of pushing that, uh, that what we can learn from him in a way that's just beyond uh, the, the technique, you know, and and like Elise said, into the metaphorical um, and what, what we can learn from him, you know, beyond that. Um, so we, we work with a lot of, uh, a whole variety of artists who, and, and because of the kind of inherited legacy of printmaking, printmaking is certainly a really strong medium 
um, that a lot of our artists work with um, or who at least started in printmaking and kind of either have it alongside another practice with another medium like painting or kind of a train, were trained in printmaking and then move into something even like sculpture. So, um, and, and you, there are still, of course, you know, we, we, John Wolfangel was lost to us very young in his career. And so there are still a whole generation of artists who would have been his contemporaries um, that are in Namibia. And uh, so that's quite something special to kind of know that, that generation. And because we're such a small um, country and a small arts space, we have kind of the, the benefit actually of being able to work with established artists who would have been his contemporaries or just slightly younger as well as an emerging art um, art market. So we we have some some of his peers, you know, the Peter Moaholo Kange is a, a Namibian printmaker um, who very much works in the same style. And, uh, and then we have kind of a more, a slightly younger generation who also have that reverence for Moafangeo, um, but who are working in a variety of medium. Philippus Shihama, um, Nikki Mare, uh, Ilya Shiwohamba is actually a, also a printmaker that was highly influenced by, by Moafangeo, and he actually has some prints um, kind of dedicated to the learning from Moafangeo that, that he feels he, he had. So, um, I think Helen can chat a little bit more about some of the more mid-career artists as well and that this the scene there. Yeah, I think um, what might be worth saying as well now is, you know, part of the joy of the work that we do, which is in the primary market, is we make sure that artists are appreciated while they're still alive. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. And <laughs> and I mean, I wouldn't claim credit for this at all, but um, for example, Peter Molokanga has now received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Art Gallery during the latest edition of the Triennale that's on at the moment. Okay. Um, so we are seeing, while the art scene here isn't hugely established, we are seeing artists' careers de develop over time and we're seeing that appreciation for their work kind of really, really being um, growing and developing. And, um, and like we say, artists' names, you know, there is, definitely a greater awareness in general of the arts in Namibia. Um, and that is also moving outside of our borders. You know, I mean, for a long time, it's been said that Mafageo is the only Namibian artist who's found any kind of international acclaim. <laughs> yeah. And I think that we're very happy to, to see that that's also slowly, slowly changing. And I think that that's because of um, creative producers like, like Nashilongo Shipwe and Mushanja, like um, Elise van Heesten, like Hildegard Titus, Frida Lull, there's a whole generation of um, arts managers who are really dedicated to taking control of this narrative about Namibian art, um, and not just reclaiming the narrative around Mafangeo, um, you know, reminding the world that he was Namibian and not South African, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, also taking control of the narrative around young artists' work, um, and that's kind of, that's the, the joy of what we're doing. I mean, some other names that um, uh, Gina didn't mention our uh, Locke Kanjengo and Petrus Amuthenu, both incredible printmakers. And then, I mean, we have Aktafal Ilovu here with us today, and he's actually a really good example of an artist who, who has like this um, very thorough training in printmaking, but most of his recent works have been um, these beautiful installations. Um, oh, well, yeah. well, I mean, maybe that's a, a perfect time to bring you in, Aktafal. Um, Oh yes, I mean I, I've also seen some of your your, your work, um, you know the, the the graphics as well as the sort of the smoke drawings and things. But uh, perhaps you could give us, um, I suppose, your perspective in terms of uh, John's influence on your work, if there is any. Um, can you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Um, I think you still might be on mute, Actifal. There okay. you go. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, <laughs> uh, me and John and how I get to know about John is quite um, at the last age or at the, in the middle of my, my art careers already. I'm saying that because uh, during my time at school, 
or oh, my primary school and secondary school, I never heard um, anything about John. I don't know anything about John. I don't know who John was. And uh, not because he was not doing most, it just, I think it's because of um, art was undervalued or is still undervalued in Namibia uh, when it's come to the Northern part of Namibia. So when I travel to, 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 to Windhoek for, uh, to, to, you know, in John Mafongeo Art Center is when I get to learn about John Mafongeo. But there is, I recalled one day where there was a book about that uh, John, John's artwork appear in one book. Then we were like, ah, what is this? Um, you know, it's because, again, it's because of the undervalue of the artwork. We don't really take it serious. And I, to be honest, John, according to my grandfather, uh, who happened to also um, uh, live in Onamnama, uh, where John was uh, 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 relocated with her mother, or Onamnama is actually a, a, it's a very, it's a, it's a, a deep border of Namibian. Uh, it's very close to the artificial border that was created between Namibia and Angola, which because I, I, I understand that John was born in Angola. And by that time, when he was born, he was, that time it was Namibia, it was not Angola. Then there was, they created a, an artificial border in between them so that they can call the other part Angola and this part of Namibia. That's why now it's, 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 it's a challenging because uh, we say John was born in Angola, but uh, he's a Namibian. Uh, I guess because it was maybe because of he moved to Namnama. So, and he was also schooling and teaching at Odibo. So, but again, even at Odibo where John Mwafongeo was uh, teaching and uh, uh, was schooling, they still don't have, uh, they don't have access to Mwafongeo's artwork, for example. Yeah. They don't have anything on their buildings, for example. All the school and the kids that are still living or that are still studying in the uh, northern part of Namibia, where John comes from, they are still, some of the majority, they don't have um, uh, a clear clue or picture on who John from Girl is, how does his artwork look like? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that, 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 is, a, that, that is really unfortunate. Um, uh, I mean, as an artist, as a printmaker, um, you might, I'm sure, be very interested in the actual liner blocks, uh, that, yeah. um, one of which I'm showing on the screen here. Um, mm -hmm. As a printmaker, is that something that interests you? Is it something that you would be able to learn a lot from in terms of the mark making and, and how it's technically being constructed and carved? Yeah. Um... Uh, to be honest, with John's prints, I actually love to to look at his prints because it reflect back to me. Reason being is because when I look at John, as a, as at least say he's one he was activist. Although the term or the 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 term activist was not very common by that time, I think um, also art activist because now the term is of uh, it's everywhere. So yeah. um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm following uh, because at his time, that was that or that what he could do. But at now, this at my time, I can do more better or talk about what is happening in my, in on my times, because John okay. talk about his time. Yes, yeah, so I mean, you, you, you the, the kind of social realism and narrative he was telling, perhaps in the 70s and 80s, uh, is it, it maybe inspiring to, to an artist of your generation to talk about more contemporary issues. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Octopal. Um, I don't know if it's Anilin back on. I saw her come on and then drop off again. Um, I, I think she has, I think we have lost her temporarily. Um, well, in case she doesn't, Come back. I mean, I, I'll give you a few of my, uh, uh, some of my input. Um, you know, 
seeing this whole collection together has been remarkable uh, for me as an art historian. Um, you know, I don't come, come from a fine art background, uh, you know, so these lino blocks and, and these related prints um, are a little foreign to me. So to be able to see a pair like the one I'm showing you here with the mirror image in the print um, and actually see the fine carving uh, into the liner block has been very instructive to me. Um, you know, maybe the closest thing we have, certainly in the South African art market, is someone like Cecil Scottness, you know, who was using uh, carved incised um, panels and blocks as a finished artwork. And uh, when I look at these uh, John Marfangeo uh, blocks, they, they, are, they are absolutely finished, unique artworks in themselves. Uh, they are wonderfully um, tactile, but also uh, they are sculptural works. You know, some are more deeply carved than others. Um, but to me, there's an amazing sense of creative moment in these works. The idea of, oh, you can really get a sense of, uh, of John actually driving the various blades uh, through the linoleum. Um, there's a real, as I say, moment of, of, of action. Um, it, it, in these kind of works. Also, I have to say, to conceive of these works starting from a, a blank piece of linoleum uh, it, it is also remarkable to me. Uh, you know, I said a bit earlier that at first glance they come across as, uh, as naive depictions or impressions, but they couldn't be anything further from it. You know, these are very complex narratives with, with multiple uh, um, sort of narrative elements throughout a single, usually rectangular block. Um, you know, work like this, you know, there's that uh, sort of angel with a cross uh, on, on, on the chest, sort of surrounded by this uh, circular border, uh, and then there's action within it. It reminds me of um, Greek red figure and, and black figure uh, painting and pottery. Um, to me, there's just mm -hmm. so much going on in, 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 in works mm -hmm. like this. Uh, much, much more sophisticated, I think, than, than, than people give it credit for. Um, the other major thing for me was in terms of the actual, um, the responsibility around John's printmaking and his editions and the way he uh, tried his utmost to record everything he produced. Uh, you know, I think nowadays people don't really understand printmaking uh, as maybe they should. You know, they Many people just think you can kind of click a button and, and, and print to work. That's obviously not the case. These are all individual um, you know, impressions and prints that have gone through uh, the artist's uh, presses and uh, essentially signed off uh, by the artist as far as quality um, is concerned. And, and I understand that John, of course, kept a very good record of all the impressions he pulled uh, and the ones he sold. They were very carefully numbered. And I think that's a, it's a wonderful, clear lesson in responsible printmaking. Um, similarly, as you can see in a, in a liner block like the one I'm showing on the right, uh, all of these original liner blocks have been cancelled. Uh, you'll see the CXD on the top left corner as well as the date. Um, and that's important because they can never be used to recreate posthumous uh, impressions uh, from, uh, from the actual blocks. Um, so I love the fact that he was a master printmaker pulling his own prints. Um, the only other kind of comparable master printmaker in South Africa that did everything himself was Pirniev. You know, he also had his own uh, press. He also pulled every single one of his own uh, impressions. Nowadays, uh, understandably, because it can be so complex, um, artists tend to work and to collaborate uh, with master printmakers uh, in order to, uh, to, to produce the work. Um, yeah, so those are, I suppose, some of, some of my points. Uh, like I said earlier on, it, it's remarkable to have a sweeping overview of a single artist's output. Uh, it's something we've never done before. It's something we've um, in, enjoyed immensely. Um, it is, of course, an important collection. Uh, we, we know it, it comes from the, the old Levinson collection. We know initially uh, that it was the majority of it purchased uh, through the artist's estate shortly after uh, he died. So as far as provenance goes, uh, it's pretty much as, 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 as perfect um, as it gets. Um, I also have to say that in, in a work like uh, John's, 
it's kind of got everything. It's got so much interest. It's got humor. It's got social realism. It's got uh, contemporary history. Uh, it's of course got mythology and religion, sort of universal ideas. Um, and there are very few artists that I can think of that deal with such a wide thematic spread, um, particularly in such a, a, a beautiful manner. Um, we always look out for the clear influence of his work uh, in the South African context. And you are right. You know, I think many, many people just assume John is South African, um, but he has had an enormous uh, impact in South Africa too. I mean, there, there's so many artists that Wilhelm's already mentioned uh, through Rourke's Drift, um, but also more recent artists like uh, Wonderboy Kumalo, uh, you know, who was at uh, Cavisham and, 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 and Ardmore uh, in Natal more recently, uh, who picked up on John's wonderful little lines and poetry um, that kind of combined with the, 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 the visual narrative uh, so spectacularly. I also think to me, having now spent a bit of time with all these works, um, there's always something to notice. You know, in a work like this, The Death of Chief Philemon Eliphas, uh, you know, every single register is a narrative in itself. Uh, and and when, just when you think you've kind of seen it all in the print, the other little uh, details um, that, 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 that seem to emerge to sort of flesh out uh, the story. I think he's a, a very universal artist that I, I can't imagine anybody not finding something in John's career that, 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 that isn't appealing. But um, I, I think unless they, there's anything else that anybody would, would, would like to, to add or to mention, I say I, I'm sorry that I'm in the end wasn't able to, 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 to join us. But um, if there's anything, unless there's anything else somebody would like to say, we can perhaps take any questions or, or say goodbye. No? Well, then I suppose I, 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 on that footing, I'd just like to thank uh, Helen and Elise and Actifel and, and Gina for joining us. Um, you know, Susie and, uh, and Vilhelm and I and, and, and Marion always try and talk about how uh, you know, our borders are collapsing in Southern Africa as far as art making is, is concerned. Uh, and that's very, very encouraging. It's perhaps been isolated and parochial in the past, but um, um, as I say, it's changing very quickly. And there are obvious uh, connections between, uh, between all these Southern African neighbors, which uh, hopefully we can emphasize um, in, in the coming years. But, Anyway, thank you all so very much. Uh, the other people listening, just to let you know that uh, the sale continues until Monday evening. Um, you can obviously view everything on the on the e-catalog. Um, it is all on display here in our Houghton um, uh, viewing rooms. Uh, should you uh, not be in Vintook and closer at hand, you're welcome to come and look at everything. Uh, marvel at the detail, uh, not only in the in the actual uh, prints, but in the the, the linoleum blocks too.